Hi everyone, my name's Ruth Madison. I'm a tutor with Galway and Roscommon ETB. And for my FitFest presentation, I'm going to share with you my experience in using Flipgrid with my class. Um, I teach a childcare class and um, we've tried out Flipgrid in the last academic year while we've been learning online, um, as we've had to all move online due to COVID. So I'm sharing my experiences and I hope that some of um, what I share with you might be useful for you and give you ideas for ways you might use Flipgrid with your class. So I have been doing a course with the National College of Ireland for the last year um, on technology enhanced learning. So that's where I was first introduced to Flipgrid myself as a student. So I had the experience of trying it out um, as part of the course. And then later on, when we had to test out different technologies with our classes, I chose to use Flipgrid with my class. I'm a part-time tutor. Um, I teach the level five early childhood care and education course in Gort Further Education and Training Centre. So we're a part-time class, um, usually evenings, two evenings a week. And my learners um, are in the centre under the Back to Education initiative. So at the time I was running this investigation, I had eight female learners in the class, ranging in age from 24 to 63. So I have a variety of learners. Um, lots of them are um, perhaps working already in childcare and uh, working part time in the day and then are studying in the evening to complete the qualification. I also have learners who may uh, be returning to education and perhaps have young children at home who they're caring for in the daytime. So they're quite busy, um, but they're all quite focused. Um, and although they didn't have huge confidence in using technology when we moved online, they've all got a very positive attitude to trying things out. So um, when we decided to try out Flipgrid, we kind of approached it with a let's give it a go attitude. And um, they all took on the challenge very well. So Flipgrid is a video discussion platform, and I'm sure elsewhere in FECFest there'll be more um, presentations explaining more about um, all the things you can do with Flipgrid. Um, it's easy to access. It was easy for me to set up a Flipgrid group for my class. Um, so I added their student email addresses and I put a join code on. So it's restricted to just our class. So it's not public and um, only we have access to the Flipgrid page. The challenge I had was to try and improve my learner engagement with uh, reflective practice activities. So during the childcare course, there's lots of requirements for my learners to do reflective practice. Um, so in particular, while I was doing this investigation, we had been working on the communications module where they all had to reflect on their mock interview. And they were about to start the work experience module where they had to do their 10 diary uh, reflections from their work placements. So I was trying to find a tool that we could use to perhaps replace the written diary entries and maybe something that would be more engaging for my learners. Um, so perhaps they would get more out of the process of the reflective practice. Because it's a useful thing for learners to reflect on their progression during a course. But it's also important for the childcare um, course in particular, because reflective practice is a, a skill that childcare workers need to have. So that's what we, we tried out with the class. And I'm just going to show you now the, um, the first Flipgrid activity that I set up for my learners to use. So this is the Flipgrid um, page for our very first activity. So I thought to begin with, I would make it very easygoing and relaxed. So it was a very simple activity. So to set up the activity, I recorded a video myself here, which the learners could play. But I also gave an introduction to it here for the learners. The nice thing about Flipgrid is that there's access here to immersive reader. So um, any learners that had difficulty in reading the text could use immersive reader to read the text. Um, and also captions are available um, for the videos too. So it's very accessible to learners, um, you know, with all different levels of abilities. So I put up the video for them and um, I just gave them the link to it and they found the link, went on to the video and they recorded their own responses. It's really simple for them to do and their responses then are further down the page. And to begin with, I moderated the activity, which meant that I could check their responses first. So in case someone had made a mistake or had recorded something, you know, that was a bit embarrassing, there'd be a chance for me to let them know and let them re-record it. And um, so that I think helped them feel at ease doing it for the very first time. 
So all their responses then were shared on this Flipgrid page and they could all watch and listen to each other's responses. And all I was asking them to do was just to introduce themselves and share a book or a TV recommendation for us to watch during lockdown. So that was how we introduced it. So that way I could check, could everyone use it okay? Um, and were they all familiar with it before I set it as an assessment activity for their reflections for the mock interviews, which I did the following week. And the results were really good and really positive. So what I found was that the whole class did use the Flipgrid uh, video for their reflections. So I had said to them that they had to do it by video, but I was expecting that maybe one or two might have problems and come to me to say they couldn't do it. But in fact, all of them did it. Um, they all did it very quickly. So one of the things I had found before was that um, they would do their skills demonstration. So in this case, the mock interview, but they might not write the reflection and hand it in till quite some weeks afterwards. And then it was really noticeable because um, you could tell they hadn't really remembered what they had felt at the time. So they actually recorded their videos. Most of them did it within half an hour of actually doing the mock interview. And 60% of them actually used their mobile phones to record the videos. So that's really important because if I'm asking them to do video diaries and submit them, um, I want to make sure that all of the learners can access that. So even those who aren't able to use, uh, don't have access to a laptop at home. So that was really encouraging. And then I asked my learners to give me some feedback. Um, and all these quotes here are directly from the feedback forms that I gave to the group. So um, I enjoyed the simplicity. So that was really important that it was simple and easy to use because if I was trying to give them a new technology that was complicated or difficult, I think it would have put them off straight away. So the fact that it was very user friendly and easy to use was really positive. Flipgrid allows more freedom in how, where and when I can complete tasks. The accessibility from my phone makes this possible. So as I said, a lot of my learners are very busy. Um, so it was great that they had that flexibility there to complete their reflection wherever they were. I find it much easier to express myself when talking. So a few of my learners don't have English as a first language. And while their written um, assessments are all a very good quality, um, it was good for me to realise that actually they found it easier to express themselves talking. And it's something I'd never really considered before um, that uh, for a reflection, especially, which is very personal, that maybe having a video option would be better for all learners, but in particular, perhaps learners whose who's second language is English. Um, and I was more prepared to complete the tasks sooner, giving a more honest reply. So that was really nice for me to, to read because um, that's what I was hoping for, that the reflections would be more genuine and from the heart from the learners. So all in all, it was really positive. Um, we've continued to use Flipgrid. I've got it there as an option. So where there's other reflective activities, I don't have to do it as a video diary, but I always give it now as an option. So for those learners who prefer to express themselves um, by talking, it's there for them to choose if they want it. And we also use it for um, kind of more uh, informal activities from week to week because we have missed out on the face-to-face -face of classrooms. And in a Zoom online environment, um, there isn't always the same class discussion. So having a space where learners can share videos online has been really useful. It's good for the learners who perhaps are a bit too shy to speak out when we're online in class. Um, and it's good for learners who maybe want to have a bit more time to think about what they're going to say before they, they share something with us. And moving on, I'm going to try and use Flipgrid more myself. Um, I'm now looking at using Flipgrid to share my feedback with learners when they're submitting their work for assessment. So I'm trying to do less feedback by email. We're not in the classroom anymore, so I normally would sit with them one to one and talk over their assignments when they hand them in. So instead, I'm using Flipgrid Shorts where I can screencast and have the learner's assignment up on the screen. And as I'm looking at it on screen, I could be talking about what needs to be done with the assignment. And then I can share that video really easily with the learners just by a link. So I'm trying to use Flipgrid now myself so that I'm doing less um, email feedback and more video feedback. So that's a brief summary then of how I've used Flipgrid with my class. And hopefully um, some of you will be inspired to have a go and try yourselves.